I'm Patrick Watson, I'm an astrologer, and welcome to the third episode of Big Fat Astro Chat. Today I have with me Kelly Surtees. Uh, she's an astrologer based out of Australia, although she, you'll find her everywhere. And um, she is really, really awesome. So welcome to the show, Kelly. Thanks, Patrick. I'm so excited because I feel like between the two of us, there's just this excessive Jupiterian energy and I'm just really excited about talking. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. And of course, both of us with our accents. Right. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of comments like, oh my God, I love your accent. Oh my God, your accent. Oh my God. Oh my God, your accent. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Like your accent is like how hot, but like your body is not hot. So, (laughs) so. Yeah, like yeah, oh I've always I've always had that vibe with with uh, women the the accent. Like that's like, the oh, unspoken yeah. follow on from your accent right. so hot. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> or you know, or or it's like oh you're, um you know uh or people think like oh you're English you must just get all the babes and I'm like well actually you know I, I. <laughs> You know, no. <laughs> the answer um, to that is like, no. No, no. But you're I mean, doing your, your amazing weight loss challenge. Like, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's very exciting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Um, just for But this is also thing. a Jupiter problem, right? Like, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's kind of, yeah. So we can, that, we can go straight into can, body types yeah, and temperament sure. right there. Yeah, right, right now. Yeah. So one of the reasons I brought Kelly onto the show, for anyone who's watching, is because uh, Kelly knows a lot about and has worked a lot with the idea of temperament, which is basically a way of being able to kind of describe someone overall. You kind of take like a a survey of like different points in the chart that add up to, um, you know, one of the four temperaments or mixes. Uh, Everyone has a little bit of every bit of each temperament. But I mean, if you are like uh, dominant in one that kind of describes you kind of overall. Uh, Kelly, do you want to kind of describe a little bit about how that works? In the yeah, way that totally. Like less the... dumb than I do. No, no. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's great, Patrick. So temperament is a, it's a technique that was really popular in, I guess, the medieval tradition of astrology. And it has a huge role to play in medical and health astrology. So it speaks to your physicality, but also how that kind of ex- is expressed and reflect in your psych- reflected in your psychology. And the way I describe it is it's like the soil that your soul and that your personality is kind of sprung from. And to give you a really kind of uh, like just an astrological, like a chart example, one of the factors that you consider in the chart when you're assessing one's temperament is the phase of the moon. And so very simply, you know, we, we used to thinking of like an Aries moon, just the moon sign means this person is fiery and independent and impulsive, but there are four quarters in the moon's phase. And each of those phases, if you like, is associated with an elemental quality. It's a more modern way of describing it, but each of those quarters in the moon's cycle is associated with one of the four temperaments. So you could be an Aries moon, but your moon might be in the disseminating moon phase which is actually an earth moon phase. So straight away, you're going to get this sense of, yeah, this is an Aries moon, but it's a little bit more of a grounded, measured Aries moon. And so that's like a very specific example, just to let people know where we're going with this, I guess. But the idea is that it's the, the temperament will be this... Um, it's almost like the invisible quality that is the sum of the parts uh, of the sum of some specific parts in your chart that give a tone to your personality. And the four uh, temperaments are the melancholic temperament, which is like the earth, the cold, dry combo, um, which is often described as a bit of the Saturnian, you know, the very pragmatic, sometimes a bit, you know, melancholic leads to depression. Like if you have the brooding. Yeah. Yeah. Edward Cullen. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm like, (laughs) what is that? Twilight, of course. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yes. The Edward Cullen um, temperament. Temperament. (laughs) Then we have what's probably the most directly opposite to the melancholic temperament, which is the choleric temperament, which is the combination of, of heat and dryness. And this is a very fiery, combustible, you know, very volatile, uh, but also it can be inspiring, but it's not super grounded. Yeah. Uh, so melancholic, choleric, this is a, such a random order. Um, and then we right. have the phlegmatic temperament, which so that, is- Does that mean that you have a lot of snot and mucus? 
Yes, it can. It, it can indicate that wetness, you're right? the wetness. Yeah. You have an excess of wetness. And of course, and actually, as I'm explaining this, Patrick, I realize I need to back up a second because okay. the temperaments are combinations of the four original qualities. So the four qualities are heat or cold mm -hmm. and then dryness or or moisture and each temperament which is like an element but more than an element is a unique combination of two of those four qualities i see so when we say like choleric is heat and dryness so you first of all you have to understand what heat means and what dryness means and then you put them together in the choleric oh. um, and of course we've completely ignored the phlegmatics which is kind of what happens because <laughs> you know in their best form they're very caring and nurturing but in their worst form they're like a wet blanket um, because right. they're that moist, they're cool and moist. And then of course the, the temperament that gets all the best press, um, which is the sanguine temperament. And that's a combination of heat and moisture. And the simplest way for a modern person to try and connect with that would be through the ideas of the air element, which are, have a lot of crossover. The sanguine temperament would be the Jupiterian temperament. Mm -hmm. um, the choleric temperament would be Mars or, or the sun, probably more Mars because it's a little bit more excessive. Uh, and the phlegmatic temperament would be associated with the moon primarily. Yeah. So what are some, so the, um, do you, would you mind kind of summing up kind of uh, how someone might do this in their own chart if they're kind of totally. thinking like, oh, what's, my, what, what's my temperament? Totally. Um, yeah. So there's, um, there's what I call the Lily long form of temperament assessment, which I don't recommend because there's about 15 points and you end up almost looking at everything in the chart, but uh, it's one way of going about it. And for the very thorough listeners out there, they will want to look up the Lily long form, which is actually in a book three of Lily's Christian astrology, uh, which is like an extra to the main one. Mm. And then, so, but the, the main points you need to assess when you're uh, figuring out your temperament are the qualities of the sign of the ascendant, the qualities of the sign of the ascendant ruling planet. Do you mean, sorry, pardon me. Yeah. So, uh, do you mean uh, the elements like fire, earth, air, water? Yes. Death. Yes. Yeah. So yes. the fire signs are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The t earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The air signs are Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And the earth signs, oh, sorry, uh, the water signs are Cancer, um, Scorpio, and Pisces. So yes. I'll, 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 as, we're, as we're doing this, I'll, in post, I'll probably like have a little list here down the middle. Which are, like, totally. A little visual aid. So, a uh, visual, and actually, okay. I'm realizing I do have like a checklist of temperament points that I'm just going to try and open up this document. And then oh, we yeah, can post sure. it. We yeah. can post it. Oh, shit, post it on, on my website too. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, if you're watching, yeah. kellysastrology.com is Kelly's website. And that's Kelly's without an apostrophe. So just K E L L Y S A S T R O L O G Y.com. I will. Um, have a link in the description as well uh, for this and uh, yeah you can all check out her very like lovely looking is you have a very lovely designed site oh very thank fun. you it, it, like it's so funny because um we're talking so the first point you're talking about is the um element of the ascendant yeah and that's actually one thing i'm going to be focusing a lot on in the coming year because I'm starting this new series where I'm going to be basically doing interviews with the specimen of each ascendant and ruler combination. Yes. Um, so I'm going to be kind of really diving in depth uh, with like figuring out like the sort of archetypal, um, you know, the specific uh, sort of meaning for every possible combination of ascendant ruler. It's going to be a massive project, but I think it'll be really interesting to watch and uh you know because the ruler of the ascendant is one of the like absolute key things you kind of look for in someone's chart just to kind of get an, an idea about the essence of their soul right because the the ascendant is where you know day and night meet it's sort of where the um you know matter meets soul in a sense light and dark and so the ascendant where the ascendant falls like that's why that's such an individualized point and where the planet that rules it um can have such a sort of overall general descriptive uh factor um in sort of if you wanted to kind of sum someone up you could almost just point to like their ascendant ruler which is a bit different than the way people think about like say their sun sign um 
that's something that's sort of generally applicable on like an annual basis, you know, because all the people born that year of the year you were born are going to have some of the same characteristics of the uh, whatever major aspects are being made with the sun in your sign. But, um, you know, the ascendant really may kind of individualizes it. So anyway, that's why the ascendant is important. And that's one of the first points we look at for determining your temperament. So the first point you said was just determining the element of your ascendant. Then the next one. Yeah, hugely. So, I mean, and part of it is that, um, like, I so agree with you, Patrick. It's, it's almost like one of my missions in astrology is to try and help people understand the importance of the ascendant sign and the ascendant ruling planet. And in, in many ways, you get a better summary of the personality by looking at that combination of factors. Right. Like, are you a Gemini ascendant? Okay, where's Mercury? And create a story based on the sign Mercury's in and that Gemini ascendant. And that's going to give you a much more relevant uh, sort of basic personality profile. And you can really be very creative with that. You know, it, essentially there are 12 different types of every ascendant. And I think this is what your research project yeah. is going into, which was yeah, wonderful. I was like my, my, yeah, the research part of me was just loving you actually doing 144. Um, so, you know, you can be a Gemini ascendant with Mercury and Gemini that's going to be a very different kind of Gemini ascendant than if you have Mercury and Scorpio. And the way you think about that from a temperament perspective is you, you're starting to blend those qualities of heat and moisture and coolness and dryness. Gemini being an air sign would be a hot, moist sign. So it's got the heat, which is, can be a bit activating and energizing, but it's got the moisture. So it's, it's also about connection. It's, in, mm -hmm. it's arousing energies and, and vibrations, but also with a view to connection. Yeah. And, you know, is that Mercury placed in such a way that it's in helping enhance that qualities of the Gemini ascendant, or is it placed in such a way that it's kind of tamping them down? So right. the ascendant and the ascendant ruling planet are the two really key factors to look at um, in your temperament assessment. The next two things to look at come from the moon and they are the sign that the moon is in, but also the phase that the moon is in. And again, I think the moon is one of the completely underrated tools in modern astrology because yeah. we all come into it obsessed with our sun sign, which is so, it's it, like, it's a bit broad. As you said, it's like a month by month thing. The moon changes sign every two and a half days and it changes phase approximately every three to four days. So within that 30 day month of all the Scorpios born each year, we've got Scorpios with the moon moving through different signs and different phases. So that's part of the complexity, but also the magic and the excitement right. and the interest of astrology. So you're up to four factors now on your temperament checklist, ascendant, ascendant ruling planet, moon sign, moon phase. And, and so each yeah. phase is associated with an element. So the opening phase is associated with the... Uh, yeah. So the first two, so in modern astrology, we tend to use eight phases of the moon okay. and um, the temperament assessment just looks at the quarter breakdown. Mm. And so the first two phases, the new moon and the crescent moon would be air or sanguine phases. So moon phases, like if you're a new moon baby or a crescent moon baby, your moon has the qualities of heat and moisture to it. It's like mm. a spring energy. If you want to think about it like that too. Yeah. The second quadrant, which has the first quarter and the gibbous phase, they're the fire or summer phases. So there's heat and dryness there. And you get some, like if someone's got a fire sign moon born into that first quarter or gibbous phase, it's incredibly fiery, almost like a cliche fire yeah. moon. But if someone's got like a Taurus moon and their first quarter moon, that person is much more dynamic or driven or motivated or even energetic than you would expect a typical Taurus moon to be. So not every, not every... I mean, it sort of makes sense. It's sort of like a duh statement, but like not every Taurus moon is the same, you know? Correct. Kind of depending on the relationship it has with the sun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same. I'm very passionate about people understanding that. Yeah. <laughs> totally. One hopes. What, pardon? Well, yeah, one hopes. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah, um, it's they're mm. so different. And then third quarter round, so full moon and disseminating moon phases, they're our earth or autumn. So they're cool and dry. And then the last quarter, uh, which is the third quarter moon phase and the balsamic or the waning crescent phase, those two phases are water or phlegmatic and mm -hmm. cool and moist. So, I see. Yeah. Okay. So after we've considered the, the, uh, the, moon, the moon sign and moon phase, well yeah. moon sign, 
uh, its element, then we consider. Yeah. So this is when it gets confusing because you have to look at the sun, but you're looking at the sun according to Northern hemisphere seasonal qualities. So we often think Aries, Leo and Sag, they're all fire signs and they are, and they have the fire qualities, but in this temperament assessment, Aries, Taurus and Gemini go together as the first three signs and the signs of spring. So if you're, you know, an Aries, Taurus or Gemini, you would be looking to add some heat and moisture into your temperament assessment. Does it, so this is confusing. Yeah. So we should run through everyone because right. this is totally new. Right. For people. Yeah, so Are you Aries, remembering this yeah. part? Right. Well, I'll probably, I'll have some sort of visual aid up too. So Aries, Taurus, yeah. Gemini is like the spring uh, or uh, the fire elements they're air actually uh, so uh, spring air, is air me. yeah, me, yeah. And moisture yeah so and then the next one cancer leo virgo would be summer element summer so that so there that's they're the more heat and dry that's okay. they're almost we're saying right. that because of the season when the sun right. is in those signs that there's more of that heat and dryness yeah. the fire quality and then um, libra scorpio sagittarius would be Autumn and earth. So they have cool and dryness. I love that you say autumn, by the way, because everyone here says fall. fall. You know, look at, look at the leaf fall. It's fall. And I'm just like, it's autumn, okay? Stop I know. Being like, that sounds like <laughs> British heritage coming through. Like, yeah, a little bit. But yeah. I, I don't really take my nationality very seriously. I mean, I'm American and English. So it's like, yeah. all right, both of y'all are fucking up right now with stuff in the world. So like, I'm not exactly like proud to be. Oh, no, gosh, no. You know, no, there's you know, like this... Like, horrific scandal going on with with the deputy prime minister of australia right now where his life is just a cliche uranus transit and it's just not something to be proud of either yeah, yeah it's just like whatever like oh um, god um yeah okay, and then our la last three signs capricorn aquarius pisces they're winter signs. So they're water or cool and wet. Well, okay. That makes sense. I actually have something I can throw on the screen really quickly. Oh yeah, sure. Do you, do you want me to do yeah, that? Go ahead. Um, so this is a yeah, handout. Make sure you put, yeah. Your, yeah, minimize your porn first. <laughs> Make sure it's G rated. Yeah. Um, so this is actually a handout from a, a lecture I've given on the temperament. Oh, wow. And so it's basically the factors that you're looking at, the main factors. So the reason I kept mentioning the hot or the cold or the wet or dry is that you're essentially putting like a check, bar, check, mark, check mark or ticking the box, you know, is your ascendant, you know, what's, what element is it? And is your ascendant, you know, maybe your ascendant's in a water sign. So it's, um, it's not going to be hot. Sorry. It's going to be cold and wet <laughs> if it's a water sign. <laughs> So you, you, this is kind of the process. Um, maybe your ascendant ruler is... Could you take us through your charts? No. Oh, okay, um... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all right, what about mine? <laughs> Let's do yours. Yeah, all right, we'll do mine. Let's do yours. Okay, okay. so um, my ascendant is in Leo, so that would be a fire sign. Yeah, we should absolutely do yours because your okay, ascendant's yeah. in Leo. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, so... hot and dry. Hot and dry. Okay. And, you're a, so the, and then the sun, which is your yeah. ascendant ruler, what are the intrinsic qualities of the sun? So it's, we're not looking to see where the sun is in your chart. Right. The sun is a fire planet. So it is yeah. hot and dry too. Okay. Uh, and then your, what is your moon sign? And the moon sign is Scorpio. Right. So we get some cold and some wet. And then um, if your sun is New in moon. Leo. Um, my, my sun is in Libra and my oh, moon pardon. is separated. Yeah. yeah so New moon. moon. So that's. Mm -hmm. Hot, hot and wet because that's the new moon phase. Yep, um, which is lovely. Hot and wet sounds good, <laughs> and then the sun, <laughs> and then the sun. You're, yeah, sun's a Libra. So you're yeah. an autumn sun. Yeah, cold and dry. Cold and, and then dry. normally, like if, and I asked Lee Lehman once years ago in a lecture workshop she was doing. I'm like, so you know, I was really like, how do I do this right? You know, I was a bit obsessed yeah. with the right way of doing it. Because when you read all the traditional texts, it's a bit rough and ready. Like, oh yeah, this. And, and, and I said, just so how do you do it? She said, you just get a feel for it. She doesn't have a checklist or anything. She's like, you just feel for it. I'm like, this is not helping me. Yeah. Um, so in the traditional text, they will talk about this thing called the Lord of the Geniture. Mm -hmm. And if that's something you work with or you know what that is, you can add it in. 
I find I don't usually go to that. Just doing I those see. five points gets you in the ballpark, basically. In the ballpark. Okay. Um, I don't know what my Lord of Janitor is. Yeah, the technical definition is it's a planet that has to have a combination of accidental and essential dignity. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I mean, Forget many it. charts don't even have that, you no, know. No, mine so, definitely doesn't. So we, we'll uh, just put a... So I don't want yeah. our you know listeners to fret about that. Right, yeah, don't worry. It's um, okay if you don't have a Lord of Janitor. It's okay to suck like me. All right, so, okay, so... Yeah. Okay, yeah. so then we add it all up. Okay, all so we've right. got... Um, now I've got to really going to test my drawing skills. Three hot. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like your child drawing. Yeah. yeah. Two so, wet hmm. and three dry. So what's coming up here? Just excuse my incredibly bad screen drawing. <laughs> You've got a relatively balanced balanced temperament because the numbers are all quite similar. The numbers are quite similar, and then yeah. maybe like if, but if you were to count the top two, hot yep. and dry, that would sort of. So I would have a hot and dry temperament, which is choleric. Choleric. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you know the other two, the, the cold and wet. Yeah. If you put them together, um, would be phlegmatic. So you're you would be a choleric choleric sort of as your main temperament with a splash of phlegmatic in there. Yeah, um, which is funny because I think if people looked at my chart, they usually see all the Scorpio stuff and they would probably think, oh, like water heavy, you know, but I have like just enough other sort of fire and air things that, um, you know, it's like, I feel like that in some ways this temperament analysis like shows up a kind of a more a balanced picture in some ways than just by looking at the elements of all the planets in the chart alone. Um, yes, because so it's it's bringing features from and then because you're breaking it down into all the little bits and then almost right. just putting it together in a slightly different way right and like you know your personality is fairly hot and dry like you've got a level of confidence you you know you put yourself yeah. out there but there's obviously a lot going on beneath the surface right. too so and, i didn't I, yeah. I hope you didn't i hope you don't feel like I, I brought you on here for like an ambush reading no 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 no, no, no. i mean <laughs> i i have to be careful because i default into let me assess your right. psyche based yeah. on the chart i don't want to step into your territory right. without no that's no, but that's if fine. you're okay with that oh yeah um, no, that's fine but um, also too, Patrick, like the physicality, like our appearance or our shape mm -hmm. comes into it. Yeah. I'm just guessing you're okay if I make a comment about this yeah. because of you, how you can, open you, you can, are. You can speak about my appearance. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. So <laughs> you, you, you know, fi the, the choleric gives a little bit of height, um, whereas the phlegmatic tends to make people a little shorter. I'm five, um, nine. So you're right on average for a yeah. guy, which... I think five nine is average height for a guy. Yeah, no, I'm not tall. Uh, I do have genes in my family. You know, most like a lot of my other uh, like uncles and stuff are all six foot. My yeah. dad is six foot. My brother is six foot. But then like the rest of us are all like five ten. You know, five nine, five ten. Yeah, so, yeah I have the slightly shorter gene within your family. Yeah, yes. within my family. Yeah, so. and that's the phlegmatic energy. It's like you. You know, if your moon was in Sag, for instance, I would suspect you would have been substantially taller just because right. fire raises things up, whereas right. water, you know, water is the element at the base of the um, elemental right. hierarchy. But also weight is a phlegmatic thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, because of water, it, it, you know, fat is, is you know, sort of uh, liquidish. You know, it's, yeah, soft. It's the softness. It's the, and, yeah, yeah it's the, whether it's an excess of weight or you just... Right soft and cuddly around the edges. Yeah. That's I'm when you've cuddly. got I'm very cuddly. You you are very cuddly. <laughs> um and you will you will probably maintain a level of cuddliness <clears throat> even as you slim down. Right. Yeah. Um no, I yeah, I mean I, I will, I'll always be a combination I guess of choleric and phlegmatic. So yeah. Like, yeah, and it's an interesting combination because they are almost polar opposites. Right. Yeah, I'll never be like a, I'll never be like a tiny like stick, you know, person. I'll never be no, uh, quite like that. Ever. No, no, you won't. And um, that's, I think that would be an unrealistic expectation right. for you to yeah. have. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I know. I don't. You know, I think there could be a be stockiness <laughs> or a solidness. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I can see that. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's really, really interesting. Um, it's really thought provoking, isn't it? No, it, it totally is. Like, could you, could we come back to us? Yeah. Um, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, so everyone can see my cuddliness. Um, that's oh, Patrick, we love it. Cuddly Astro. Um, 
Uh, what was I going to say? That's great. I like that. That's <laughs> that's a little bit of my Pisces stuff coming in. <laughs> well, and that's kind of what I want to say. Like, do you like when you when you meet people? Do you do you think like, oh, I bet the like phlegmatic, or or I bet the sanguine, like. You can start to assess that just based on their physical appearance. Um, would you like guess I was choleric? You, you, I, the choleric would be a little hot. Like I'd have to really think about your personality. Yeah. Like your shape is more phlegmatic yeah. for sure, but you are not like the phlegmatic personality is quite shy and mm. having been at, in conferences with you, that's not who you are. <laughs> um, so, you know, I would know there'd have to be a bit of heat in there because right. the coolness is sort of withdrawn and, you know, introverted, if you like, whereas yeah. heat is a little bit more extroverted and outgoing. So if, if somebody's happy sort of talking in public or sharing a little of themselves, they've got to have a bit right. of heat in there to so, do that. Like, are there like people you kind of always come back to as being like kind of stereotypical examples of each temperament? I really didn't want to talk about politics, but <laughs> I'm going to have to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, because I, I think I remember reading your one about, um, about Trump and yeah. how he has, according to his chart, he, what, which temperament? He's like all choleric. So He's you know how choleric. you had a nice mix of like yeah. you have a bit of moisture and there's a bit of coolness and you know, there's what we would say, like temperament is your innate mix. And you know, the idea is to have some sort of balance. Right. But ideally. One of yeah, ideally. But what happens with temperament is that, you know, of course we have these certain person, people with these really extreme personality types. So you know, what was really interesting is the U S tends to elect a choleric dominant president. Right. And maybe that's because your history is that you sort of came out of this revolution war, which would be a very choleric thing. You right. know, Barack Obama was a, um, choleric dominant, but he had a very strong secondary temperament of sanguine. Which, we yeah, know, I would guess. Right? Yeah. yeah and he's like tall and lean. So right. the tall is the choleric and the, the leanness is sanguine. So one of my brothers has that type of um, physical shape and that's his personality. Um, yeah, and his and personality Barack is, is more... very. Sorry? Oh, no, yeah, I was going to say, and Barack Obama is definitely more. Um, uh, Eloquent. Uh, gracious. Yeah. Articulate. Yeah. A, Intelligent. Um, <laughs> Good things, <laughs> really nice things. Actually. I mean, you may not agree with no, what he's yeah, saying, sure, but, but he will express himself right. in a way that is coherent and has a sense of logic or thought or rationality. Right, and some it. yeah, sort of authentic feeling behind it. And then with yep. the so with the ultra choleric temperament of of the current president, um, yeah, it's just so I can. The, he, yeah, he's a Leo ascendant, which is right. hot and dry. His ascendant ruling planet is the Sun, which is hot and dry. The sun by season, um, he's born with the sun. Um, in the spring in quadrant, Gemini. Gemini, yeah. So actually, I've just realized there's a typo in my article there. So he's hot and moist. So he, that's the only bit of moisture that he has there. Yeah, you never um, want to think about Trump being moist. Right? No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're not talking about politics. Mel Melania is never moist with Trump. Oh my gosh. The dr you can see the dryness just in the distance yeah. between the two of them. Like, so if you want to see this, like think about Barack and Michelle Obama, yeah. there was an obvious warmth to them. Right. There is some moisture between the two of them because yeah. the moist quality is a bonding binding agent. Now for anyone who follows me on Instagram, I'm always posting pictures of cakes because <laughs> if you follow my Instagram, I live on cake. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, et cetera, mm -hmm. but it is still cake. Yeah. And you've got to use eggs to bind it together because that's what moisture does. So that's what wetness does. Interesting. Wow. I never thought of that. Right? Like, <laughs> never thought about food <laughs> the, like this. The temperament Patrick. of cake. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And if, if you bake something and it's dry and crumbly, there's too much, the, like the, the dryness, you didn't put enough moisture in there. Right. Because what dryness does is it separates things. And separateness can be a healthy distance or it can right. be this brittle, which is, we see the brittleness. With, yeah, honestly, yeah. you should do, you should do like, yeah, no, you should do an explanation of the temperaments <laughs> like with cakes, like pictures of cakes, like yes. cakes gone wrong, like too crumbly, too choleric, not enough moisture. Yeah. Correct. Wow. But it's, they, like we're really rocking the food analogies here. This is great. Big, it's big fat astro. That's yeah. what we what do here. Um, I love so, it. So <laughs> Trump has the Sag moon, yes. which is hot and dry. Hot and the dry. moon phase. Yeah. He's just past the full moon phase. Um, so he's um, a cold and dry moon. So there's a tiny, like one factor is 
cool and one factor is moist, but the rest of it is heat and dryness, which is the most extreme. And literally, um, the definitions in the textbook um, of someone who is pure choleric or an excess of choleric, someone who makes quarrels, someone who is combative, um, someone who quickly undertakes affairs and then quickly neglects them, forgets them, neglects them, someone who is inconstant and ready to do an about face, and the, the physical description of a choleric, the hair on the head is yellowish red and flaxen, wow. and much of the face is tawny or sunburnt. Wow. That's and incredible. So but, I mean, what's, what's amazing about that to me is, I mean, if for skeptics of astrology, you, I mean, this, you just add it up those elements. It's not even, it's not even like the interpretation is almost taken out of your hands. Like you're just adding it up. You could have, you could have said this about Trump as a baby. Like, of course you could have you know, said it as soon as he like, was born. As soon as he was Trump born, was you had a chart, yes. like you could have told this. So like that kind of blows my mind a bit, but it could be like kind of that, um, you know, uh, accurate in just a general description of someone's personality. Because I hate how I hate all those tests. There's like tests of astrology where like, yes, you know, um, everyone gets the same interpretation. Everyone says, Oh, it fits me. It's like, that's not testing astrology. Like, you know, I mean, um, I think there are definite like, you know, uh, temperamental differences and, and and that's definitely like, (laughs) you see it. I mean, and then like to contrast for instance with, because I think the, the blog post I did was contrasting the temperament between, Trump and Hillary. And this was sort of just to sort of assess who would be a more suitable, like who has a nature or a temperament whose personality mix is more suited to the job. And Hillary does have some of that choleric energy, but she's more of a melancholic type. Right. She's a little more, right. She's, she's not articulate. She, one of her big problems is she has trouble expressing her ideas. Well, and then, and then, and she was often so criticized for appearing sort of inauthentic, you know, or, um, you know, trying too hard. And it's like, that's asking a lot of a melancholic person to, I know, wanted to give her a big hug because I know. The, the melancholic <laughs> is the worker bee behind the scenes. Like yeah, she, I mean, yeah, I mean, she, yeah, I think she, she just was, doesn't want to have to go out and sell herself. She just wants to get on and do it. And, and honestly, that's, you know, what's most important. You know, I mean, I think, you know, she, she definitely, uh, had a fair case to make for herself, you know? And it, yeah, I mean, she, I, yeah. Uh, so that kind of makes you wonder then to, you know, you said the, the UN, United States more in general is more choleric. Um, yeah. Although it's funny because 3 million more people in the country actually went out and voted for the well, choleric candidate. That's, and that's, so, it's funny too, to my mind that this kind of quiet, slow plotting energy, because and I'm not saying like, you know, Hillary's right. amazing or she's perfect. And yeah. I'm not saying she would have solved all the problems. I don't want people right. to be like Hillary's bad yeah. too. I'm like, of course, all politicians, right. you know, sell a little bit of their soul to the devil at some point, I guess. But what I found, what I was really struck by through the campaign was the the exhaustive legacy of work that Hillary had done on, on behalf of certain groups of minorities. And I right. was like, this goes back a really long way. Like, much further back than I thought, which seems to be relevant with the melancholic. It's like doing that stuff behind the scenes that is really not necessarily talked about at the time. The person who, who, yeah, the, the behind the scenes person who kind of makes things tick along, you know, yeah. but doesn't necessarily want or get the sort of due credit. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then we can contrast that with the Canadian prime minister right now, because I feel like right. if we have to talk politics, I really want to put a picture of Justin on the screen because <laughs> I don't know if you know what this fellow looks like. Oh but... yeah. Uh, I'll bring up a picture. Um, here we go. He's, um, he's quite easy on the eye. Okay. Um, um, let's see. How about, uh, uh, Okay. And I'll just, I'll very quickly do, I don't know if I have his one ready to go. Let me see. Um, Cause he, you know, for people who may or may not know, you know, Justin okay. Trudeau, right. um, he's just, he's, he's much younger. He's one of the youngest prime ministers. Um, here we go. So uh, I'll get a leader with a mix three. Hot. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Here's a picture of him. Yep. <laughs> 
Did you find the box? <laughs> I found the butt one because like everyone went, everyone went nuts over the butt. Like, oh um, god, the, you gotta find the boxing picture. Wait, oh my wait, wait, god, like, look at the guy looking at his butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah. Um, he actually has a really good chart. Um, he has a fantastic yeah, chart. I've does. got it right yeah, here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can, yeah, we can take the butt off the screen. Um, you can, uh, here, I'll stop the share. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> so, if I had a butt like that, I'd be happy. Uh, you know um, what? We'd all want to put a picture of it on the screen, really. Uh, let's yeah. be honest. Um, uh, Justin Trudeau. So, so yeah, if we're looking at his temperament, we'd look at the, let's see. So uh, he, yeah, yeah, so he's, um, ascendant is, um, Virgo. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, cold and dry. The ascendant ruler is Mercury. Mercury I can Mercury never remember. Edge. Hang on. I'm just going to grab, yeah. um, so Mercury, which is Oriental and Lily says that makes it hot. Um, or that you take the qualities of the nearest aspecting planet to Mercury Okay. And I think, well, Jupiter is very close to it, um, right. which we can throw up. I just want to make sure and Sag. Yeah, that I'm doing this right. Um, sun in Cap, which is cold and wet because it's winter. The moon is hot and dry because it's in Aries. Okay. So I'm just, I just want to make sure I do it right, Patrick. Right. Sorry, this is yeah. my obsession. Yeah, yeah. With hey, no, yeah, you got to get it right. Especially if we're going to be showing people, right. I don't want to no, leave them right, in the dark. Right, right. So, okay. So we go to the ascendant, Virgo, cold and dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the ruling planet, uh, because it's Mercury's oriental, um, it's considered to be hot, um, which I guess because it's up in the sky and it gets the heat of the sun, maybe. I'm not sure why, right. where Lily's going with that, but that's well, what... Well, it is diagonal. Yeah. It's yeah. Diurnal, so, so, yeah. So that, that gives a hot quality um, or you can take the nearest aspecting planet. So um, Mercury is close to Jupiter, I guess. Yeah. Um, which could, you could add heat and moisture and then the sun in a winter sign, cold and wet. Cold and wet. But it's that moon that lifts his entire chart up because he's got the classic fire sign moon in the fire phase. So mm -hmm. the moon in the sign of Aries gives heat and dryness and it's in the first quarter phase, which gives heat and dryness. So I left out the Jupiter aspecting planet. I just put Mercury Oriental mm -hmm. in as hot. So he's three hot to two cold. So he's a hot dominant personality and he's got three dry. So he is a choleric dominant too. And look, if we're thinking about the nature of modern politics, to win, you have to win the battle. Right. And it's almost like within the way the system works, it yeah. kind of defaults, choleric. it rewards that type of personality. Um, but he does have a splash of moisture and he does have a splash of cool, or he's got too cold and a bit of moisture. So he's a little more tempered in this. He's sort of a leader in the vein of Obama, basically. Right. Yeah. A kind of uh, Obama-like mix. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so within a couple of days of the election, you know, there was a lot of, he's worked the media very well. So he's used that moon energy. Mm. Um, but he, what he did was he carried a woman in a wheelchair down a flight of stairs at a train station. Wow. Like two right. or three days after the election. So I'm like, that's that Aries moon right. that we're all seeing. <laughs> right. And because he's in his early forties and he's quite buff, wasn't a bad <laughs> right. picture. Right. Yeah. Anyway. It's, he definitely knows how to make himself look good. And I always think it's funny because, you know, from a, um, you know, from a Hellenistic perspective as well, he has this, nat he has this uh, kind of natural eminence factors where- one Tell of us the, about those. One of, yeah. One of the eminence factors that like Balin specifically singles out is like having the ruler of fortune in the 10th from fortune. And so he has a lot oh, of yes. Taurus yep. with Venus and Aquarius. Not only that, but he also has a lot of spirit in Sagittarius and he has Jupiter in Sagittarius. So that's another additional, um, you know, eminence factor, having the ruler of spirit in its own sign. In its own sign. And, and it being Jupiter in and of yeah. itself. So he, the first 10 years, the first 12 years of his life, uh, you yes. know, 1971, 1973, that was the Sagittarius period. Then 27 years. So 27 plus 12, 37, 30. So uh, around th age 39, he entered an, an Aquarius major period on Sadaka releasing from spirit. 
which is his Fortune Tenth, which contains the rule of his fortune. And that was shortly before he became party leader. Yes. Um, in uh, in Canada and was elected, pre- um, you know, prime minister. And he's you know had this ongoing fame. So he's just still going to be in a period like that for, um, you know, uh, for thirty years of his life. Um, so I imagine he'll be kind of a a mainstay. Um, on the world stage, you know, through that time, there will be the loosing of the bonds 17 years in, but um, uh, maybe that might be his, you know, sort of retirement because that's from less, politics. That's yeah. more or less what happened with Obama as well. His uh, loosing of the, he had almost the exact same scenario where he, you know, entered politics um, on a national level when he entered his Aquarius period and then um, 17 years on uh, from 2000 was 2017, which is a year he, you know, um, was no longer the president. So the loosing of the bond to Leo kind of coincided with his, you know, um, post-presidential career as opposed to his, the, I mean, this is a bit, this is going on a bit, maybe on to the, um, uh, <laughs> what the, what to the, some that? Hellenistic periods, yeah. but it's interesting. Yeah, and totally. you mentioned the first 12 years of Justin's life and there's a yeah. total typo in his name and my soul fire, but, um, Justin was born while his father was prime minister of Canada. So right. he was actually born, like his parents brought him home to parliament house. Perfect. Yeah. Hospital. So he was, he was already kind of born into a, a, a and that uh, first period of his life, he traveled a lot with his father while his father was prime minister. Right. So he, he comes from almost like, you know, in a country that doesn't have a Royal family, he's Royalty. sort of, born into the equivalent royalty yeah and, no very yeah. very well observed that's uh that's that's fantastic i also think the you know the venus um thing the fact that venus factors into his eminence is is interesting as well because his venus is conjunct the north node which i think yes adds, you know an even greater dimension to <clears throat> his um you know and then think of the things that he's famous for you know he's famous for like being a hottie basically you know with totally the, very you know, venus you know it's very venus you know i mean it's it's a, a lot of it is appearances and you know and then the appearances that he you know is able to generate for himself as well you know putting himself in situations where he you know it's very hard to look upon him unfavorably you know saving a you know bring you know, <laughs> carrying a woman down <laughs> the steps you know, in, a, in a wheelchair in a or wheelchair something. you know yeah like <laughs> this is yes that's definitely Venus at work, you know. Well, and it's it's almost like he's playing the hero to Venus. Oh yeah, if that makes sense. Like, and yeah. that would be the image that he's portrayed himself as. Yeah, and he's also been very big on um, women and women's rights. You know, right. I'm not saying he's doing enough or he's doing everything, but he's yeah. certainly done a lot more than other people in his position have done. Right. Um. Well, like like the fact that he was committed to having a, a gender balanced cabinet. Yes. You know, and uh, you know, very committed very in a very public way to notions of fairness and equality and um that's that's also you know all venus type stuff so that i mean that's the planet that's you know in the sign that he you know while he's in this 30 year period that's what he's most claimed for and most noticed for and sort of the persistent theme you know of of his uh of this period of his life professionally and that can all be gleaned from the yeah the um is it like releasing from a lot of spirit? I just thought that yes. was an excellent example. Yeah. Well, and as you said too, even before you do the releasing, the fact yeah. that fortune, the ruler of fortune is in a sign, is in the 10th right. sign around from fortune. Yeah. And that's well, one yeah. of the eminent someone, Yeah. Someone may have that, but they may not be able to take advantage of it if they don't have the... If they don't go into the right period. Yeah. So yeah. it sucks, you know, cause for, and it's funny because you see people all the time and you kind of wonder like, you know, this person is doing such a good job and, and yet no one is seeing what they're doing. And maybe, you know, if they just had the right opportunity, like they would have something more to offer the yes. world. And uh, it's, it's weird. Cause it's like your chart can show um, potential that you may actually have, but if it just doesn't turn out the right way, like, yeah, if it's like, it if totally, the spotlight never comes fully onto that, then that potential yeah. is not necessarily fully right. realized which is, which is in a really public way. Yeah, for the, and it's really interesting too for the lots, you know, because the lots, you know, originally envisioned as being like, literally like casting for lots or casting yes. lots, the dice, you know. Yes, it's, it's like, do you wherever. have, well, and it's the idea that it is a bit of a game of chance. Right somebody's lot in life versus somebody yeah. else's lot in right. life. Right. It's funny too, because, you know, people often interpret fortune like, like a benefic, 
<laughs> and yes. I'm like, mm, not really. I, like, they're like, well, it says fortune, so it must mean that it's like Jupiter, basically. And, you know, yeah, it actually has much more to do with that notion of chance. And yes. Circumstance, you know, much yes. more than it does just being good. You know? Well, and it, because, you know, you need, and for anyone who's had any kind of success in their life, it's that combination of A, you've done the work already, and then B, you've been in the right place at the right time, or, you know, right. some sort of stroke of lucky coincidence or right. randomly sort of divine timing has helped. You know, when people say an overnight success is years in the making, or the definition of luck is when hard work meets opportunity or something. So, and it's weird because it's like both of yeah, although it's funny because, uh, you know, I mean, some people say like, it's, it's all luck or some people say it's all hard work and, you know, both are, are true depending. <laughs> I mean, well, you're people, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, for some people, it really is just luck. And then for other people, it really is just hard work. But then for other people, no matter hard work will change, you know, the outcome if it doesn't, you know, eventually pan out for them. And then there are other people who just really do seem to have you know, shit luck and just never get to, you know, experience anything else. And you, I don't know, I kind of see that on a, on the, in, in the, on the, on the chart, you know, some ways like, Oh yeah, you have all these great things kind of lined up. You do have these talents and potentials and, you know, too bad you'd have to live to like 150 to actually, you know, experience any of it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's, it's tricky uh, to try and phrase yeah. that with clients, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily speak that way with. with I know, and that's what I always say when I'm teaching. We're talking colleague to colleague right, right. now. This is yeah, not exactly right. how we would say it to a client. For yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. a client could like watch this and then think, oh, that's what he really thinks. But I mean, I, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, the other thing is too. I'm not a perfect astrologist, so like, I can't always. I, I would never. No. Say, I would, I'd probably never be able to say like definitively, like you'll never have another good period in your life. Like I don't have time in an hour to <laughs> like no. through every oh God, potential no. perfection you might have to see if the <clears throat> chance that you have, you know, lines up exactly with the right thing. But um, I mean, I feel like, you know, every person has like an ocean of a chart and you can't swim in all of it. I mean, it's, no. it's so much. I mean, that's why I think things like temperament kind of help. It just gives you like kind of like a snapshot, um, you know, which gives you kind of an idea totally and i think yeah they, they to almost circle back to where we started today yeah. for people to think about a the fact that planets have qualities so planets you know so the sun and mars are hot dry planets um mm. venus tends to be a moist planet she can kind of be cold or hot depending on her relationship to the sun um saturn's definitely cold and dry jupiter mm. is absolutely hot and moist um and so we talked about Mercury being hot, but Mercury and Venus, it depends on Oriental and Occidental. And it's a little bit like right. a little bit ambivalent for those ones, but, and the moon, of course, cold and wet. And, but, but to think about the planets having those qualities, mm -hmm. um, cause I think some of the basic temperamental features can feed into your natal chart interpretation, even if you're not explicitly doing a temperament assessment. Yeah. And, <clears throat> One way you do that is what we were talking about with the ascendant. You know, if this is an Aries ascendant, but Mars is in Capricorn, think about how the coolness and the dryness of Capricorn is slowing down and tempering the feistiness of that Aries ascendant. Right. Hey, random question. Um, yeah. You, yep, Pisces rising, right? I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to check because, yeah. I mean, because honestly, like, because another way that I, I mean, I, I'm not always no, calculating people's yeah. temperance, but I mean, to me, you do just come off as such a Jupiterian figure. Like, totally. You know, you are, you know there's a very, to me, you're very, uh, like, warm and generous, uh, you know, person with your knowledge. And, you know, you're, you are literally are like a, a teacher and, you know, uh, um, cons you, you, you give people, you know, consultations. You're, you're not a, I mean, I don't know if you're actually a therapist, but, um, yes, I know you I are. Am. Yeah. Okay. You are. <laughs> you are. So, yeah. I mean, the, the counselor role is very Jupiterian, and um, mm. so I just, uh, I just think that's so like marvelous how well that's just, just knowing. No, that totally. Jupiter and I'm happy to talk about. I'm, just, I'm happy to talk about that because we're going to do. I think when you get to your one hundred forty-four yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, we will do that. Um, um, yeah. So I'm a Pisces with Jupiter and Leo, and yeah, so. this is 
when people so meet me, mutual nobody... reception then too. Sun and Pisces, Jupiter. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I said, I just said I was a Pisces with the sun and Leo, but I also have Pisces rising. Right. So yes. Um, <laughs> it's giving more of my stuff away, but, um, when people meet me, nobody ever guesses that I'm a Pisces. It's just, I, are you a Gemini? Are you a Leo? Like there, that's what I get. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mostly I get, are you a Leo? And this was, that comment that I used to get very early in my astrological practice was like, there, there's something else going on here. Cause if I'm just supposed to be all Pisces, a, why am I a little bit more outgoing and B, why does everybody think I'm a Leo? And the simple answer is, well, the ascendant ruling planet is there. And so, you know, that's the idea that, and, and maybe this is where I get a bit defensive of Piscean energy is that, you know, the cliche Piscean energy is, is very cool and very wet and just, you know, either drunk in the corner or trying to fix everyone. And um, there are certain types of Piscean risings that really go into that space, but it depends on, you know, where Jupiter is. Cause that yeah. will totally, f- and not Neptune does not depend. On yeah. Neptune. It's not Neptune. No, I've already <laughs> made a whole video about that. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, good. I had to smother that baby in its crib. Totally. So yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I think it, and that's where, you know, it's what I essentially have is a warmed up version of a Pisces rising. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really, really lovely. And actually it's, it's so funny to me um, that it's, it's actually, it's adorable that you <laughs> and, that you and Austin are the like, you know, mainstay, uh, you know, host of the, of the monthly forecast with Chris on the astrology podcast. Cause you know, you're born fairly close to Austin. Is that right? So what Austin said when we first met, he's like, Oh, you're my um, prenatal lunation made manifest because I'm, he's born a week after me. So yeah, but there was an eclipse and then I was born and he was born a week butter, later. All right. Yeah. Butter babies. Um, butter babies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just thought, I just thought that was funny that you know, like, you know, um, <laughs> uh, that Chris would decide to have like, you know, I'm going to have these two, you know, people who are born right, right around the same time, they're going to be my, you know, sort of helpers. And he's, uh, I think Austin's born with uh, the Jupiter and very, very like cancer, right? So he's like the Jupiter. He, yes. And that's the but, difference is that yeah. I've got Jupiter retro at the very start of Leo, but a week later it had got in back cancer. into cancer. And so that's one of the really fundamental differences between that's, Austin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even though, even though I, I tend to think of like, you know, Austin as being the male version of you. Um, <laughs> or, well, he is very cuddly too, yeah. and he's <laughs> he's gonna love this. You're watching this, this is a... he is. I mean, the other difference between Austin and I is we have different Mars signs because Mars shifted. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no. Well, well, I, and I'm I feel comfortable because Austin's like a dear brother to me. So, if uh, if anyone's watching um, uh, and and doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about uh, the astrology podcast. They do a monthly uh, forecast. You can. Uh, visit uh, that the the web page for that podcast is the astrology podcast.com or is yes. it just astro- if you type in astrology podcast you'll be number one in the google search so yes um, you will find us yeah, yeah you'll find you'll find them and it's very, very entertaining to listen to them each month and um and extremely informative always um thank you so no i i enjoy that a lot and uh i've enjoyed talking with you for about an hour now i just want to yes make sure we patrick i feel like we could go all day but we could yeah. indeed <laughs> Um, but we will uh, bring a bit of satin in to our yeah, yeah. no i i'm i'm really happy we got to talk and uh, we'll talk again soon about uh, your ascendant and yes um, thank you uh so if you want to find out more information about temperament and about kelly please visit www.kellysastrology.com again that's without the apostrophe and i'll have that available in the video and thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys next time